The THC Show with Steve Epstein and Mike Can on UnregularRadio.com. Back on the THC Show, and uh, we have him on the phone. Who do we got on the phone, Steve? We have Ed Forshawn. Did I pronounce that right, Ed? It's close enough. A.K.A. But, you know, most people don't know me as Ed Fortune anyway. They know me as the New Jersey Weed Man. New Jersey Super Weed Man. The <laughs> yeah, the New Jersey Weed Man is in the house. Say hello again, Ed. All right, Puff Puff Pass, Boston. <laughs> New Jersey Weed Man. Ed, uh, I was reading the story. So, briefly, historically, you started dealing in weed and you got caught. Uh... Tw- like 15 years ago with your brother? Yeah, that was in 1997. I got busted uh, in Camden County, New Jersey, based on a shipment of uh, Mexican weed from Arizona. And you started your trial, <laughs> and you did your opening, and one juror started crying, and the trial was suspended, and there was some communication, and you cut a deal. Well, it wasn't that simple. On the first day of trial, on the opening statement, well, first, actually, jury selection was interesting because I clearly was going after people who I thought were, like, potheads and people who I thought were feeling for me. I wore a shirt that had a big weed leaf on the, sh- on the shirt, and I was looking at people's, like, reaction to my shirt. I had a jacket on, and then at some point I took it off, and I had a weed leaf on my shirt. Um, and I wanted that reaction. And I Did I join you, know, you put your jacket back on? No, no, you didn't tell me to put it on or not. In fact, every day I wore a different shirt with a different slogan and everything, and the newspapers even wrote about it. Awesome. Each, every day they wrote they wrote a different what, what shirt I wore. wore each yeah. Day. All right. Um, sounds, sounds like but, uh, it, it. It basically lasted three days, but, but during, the, during the, after the opening statement, though, one juror did start crying, said she couldn't, she, she said she couldn't uh, convict this man, and that's, that's what got her thrown off the jury because oh. like she was sitting there crying and at some point the the uh, prosecutor asked for a recess and after they had the recess they called her back in and they questioned her as to you know why was she crying and if she can handle this and at some point she said that she could not convict me so they replaced her with an alternate great. so they, yes, were, they, they replaced they, her with they, an they, alternate they, mm-hmm they, and did they, they, they replaced it with an all of it, and then we started the trial again. And you um, gave the same opening? No, no, it was this was after the opening. I did the opening, and then they, then it was a a new, uh, uh, you know, then they just replaced the juror. But that juror, the first juror, the alternate juror, they they were there. They heard the opening. Uh, also. Okay. Um, the second, the, then then the, the funny thing happened was I actually had a nun, and when I say a nun, I mean a nun with a with the thing on her head and the black and white it's was on my juror. She started crying too. But when they asked her question, <laughs> she she said that she can handle it and mm. you know, she was okay. She um, was she crying for your soul. Yes. <laughs> right. So then um, you know, we had uh, different questions, different um different um uh, uh, the prosecution put on its case. I got to cross examine um and then at some at, at some point, uh, the, the, in the second day, uh, you know, the prosecutor and I both were watching. As every time I spoke, the jurors were nodding their heads or paying attention to me. I really thought that I was I was doing doing well. You know, I was really nervous about putting on my own case, representing myself. But you know, to me, it was like the trial of my life, and I think I was doing a pretty good job. And from the reaction to the jurors, and I you know I get a good feel for body language, and the body language for more than half of them were, were, were supportive of me. And at some point, I guess the prosecutor realized that too, and they, they, had, to, they had to make a few phone calls to different um, higher-ups in the, in the judiciary system in New Jersey to cut me a deal, but that's what they did. The next day, they basically offered me a bribe that I couldn't refuse just to get me out of the news, just to keep my jury nullification uh, argument, I guess, uh, you know, on the, on the low, because... Uh, I think prior to this, I don't think the Courier Post and the local newspapers had ever written about a jury nullification trial or yeah. ever even talked about jury nullification. Here it was. I was having a very public trial where jury nullification was at the center of it. Um, I had run for office, and I constantly, when I was running for office, made statements to the public that I was after jurors. This is about jury nullification. 
Um, so I was enlightening, enlightening people of South Jersey and the Philadelphia area about jury nullification. That could help me that I was in the Philadelphia area because, you know, we talk about, I could talk about William Penn and all that and the historical significance of, of the Philadelphia area and William Penn. Um, so, so it actually really worked, worked in my favor that I was yeah. from that part of the country. And what, what, what has happened now with, you have a, you have a court case right now. What's going That's on with ju- you, Ed? Well, yeah, it's like deja vu. Like, April um, Fool's you know, back, Day. Back in, yeah, back in 1997, it was about it was about 40 pounds of marijuana. Now, in 2010, I uh, I got arrested in New Jersey with a personal bag of marijuana on me. I had a pound of marijuana. I just got off the plane from California. I had, it, it was in my rental car, in my luggage, and I got pulled over by a state trooper. And uh, you know, he did the whole search. He once he knew who I was, he went and got a search warrant and. Um, you know, they found a pound of marijuana in in, in my luggage. What did they and base me, the What did they base the search on? Why would they get a search warrant for that? I don't get that. Well, after like I said, after they realized who I was, and they were just making sure that all the I's and T's were dotted and crossed. But um, you know, of course, as usual, they say they smelled it. You know, yes, that's no what they fun. always say. You know, and, and, it, 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 it wasn't because you, they looked you up and found out you and were then, the weed man. And then they found a pipe behind his seat. <laughs> Yes, but even at that, the, the police officer claims that the, the, the pipe was in plain view. It was under the seat, and it was when he was opening the doors and shining his flashlight and looking under the seat. Is when yeah, he well, I, I, it I, was I, not in plain view. Yeah, well, we're used to, to a test a lie, and we understand yep. that. Yeah, We understand yeah, all yeah, that. that. But the, yeah, that's exactly, that's when, exactly well, what happened. Now, when did they determine that your license had been suspended? Well, again, this is after the stop, you know, because they didn't know that because it, it was a rental car. So it wasn't, and, yeah, sir, I, may I have your license and registration? And you handed him the license and the rental agreement and he went back to his cruiser? That didn't happen? Yes. That did happen? Yep. Yeah, that did happen. Okay. And once he, real, once he realized who I was... And knew you had back. a suspended I a license. Video. I have a video of that up on my website, njweekman.com. There's a whole entire video about that. In fact, it's called Statement Number 2, if you look to the left to the right side of the uh, website when you're there. But, um, yeah, he uh, he came back, told me to get out of the car, and he was going to search the car, and he was going to get a search warrant, and it was on then. I mean, I, I knew at the light, because that's what happened to me. I pulled up to a light. I was in the right lane. I pulled up to a light, and a police officer, a state trooper, pulled up uh, right next to me in the left lane. And to me, I was like, oh, God. You know, I look next, I look over at him, and he's looking right at me. I knew right then and there I was getting pulled over, you know. Yeah. And, and it's, it's driving while dreaded. Yeah. I mean, I already, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you hear people out there say driving while black. Be driving while dreaded and, and a beard, you know, and have a state trooper next to you. And, and, and this could happen to long-haired white guys with beards, too. They, they, they're going to get scrutinized by, by, by a police officer. <laughs> but this and, time and you're in Burlington happened. County. This I, is, I this is Burlington County. Yes, Burlington County, New Jersey. So and wh- what towns bit, are there? Bit north, uh, Mount Holly, Lumberton, Painesport. Um, these are little towns about 40 miles uh, north and east of Philadelphia. It's basically still a suburb of Philadelphia. You know, it's about 80 miles south of uh, New York. So it's in between New York and Philadelphia. So uh, so for a carton of cigarettes um, of, of, of a amount of wheat, marijuana, how much time is this case would you be looking at? Ten years if I'm convicted. Ten years if the judge hits me with the max. Wow! Uh, it'd be ten ten years for, for, uh, for a reasonable <laughs> time. If, you know, I, I've I've raised a lot of fuss. I've pissed off a lot of politicians. You know, my mailing, you know, substances, marijuana to to different state officials has uh, really pissed them off. As it, as it's made national headline news, it's actually pissed off a few um, uh, uh, you know politicians. So. I expect if I am convicted, I would get as close to the max as they probably could. Um, you know, and my thing though is, I believe a jury, especially now today, 2011, that the, the jury out of 12 people, two alternates, 14 people, I believe five or six of them will agree more with me that the law is wrong, and yeah. that is the case that I am putting on before the before the the state. Not that I didn't have marijuana. I had it. I had it for certain reasons, too. Now, I want to say my reasons, and I want to say that the law is wrong and not I. That's absolutely right. Now, 
uh, were you uh, scheduled for trial soon? It's been 18 months. Yeah, I was actually scheduled for trial um, October 18th. It just just last week, just just passed. And there were some fireworks in the court this week, and the case has been moved back to uh, April for two reasons. One, as we were doing our... We were, on the 18th, we were supposed to do this pre-trial conference where the judge was basically just working out the final little issues with trial. Uh, the next day, we were supposed to do jury selection, but we didn't make it to the next day. On the 18th, as we were as we were uh, discussing pre-trial issues, when I when when it was said on the record that I was going to give my own opening statement with the uh, the uh, office of the public defender stand, serving as my standby, the the judge wasn't having it. When I, I started talking about how I was going to give my own opening statement, um, the judge said, you know, tried to tell me that, that the issue of, of scheduling has already been decided, the issue of, of medical use has already been decided, and you're not going to be able to talk about those things. And I told him, the only thing I want to talk about is the truth. I said, it is not I that lies about marijuana. I know marijuana is a medicine. I know marijuana is a Schedule One drug, and I used it, and this is why I was using it. And I started talking about my my particular medical issue that I'm suffering from right now, and I said that I had every intention of telling the jury that in my opening statement. That was it. He removed me from giving from from rep- self representation, which which it was a huge legal error that the judge just just did on appeal. Uh, there's no way I would I would lose that. There's Beretta versus California. And there's several Supreme Court cases that say unequivocally that I have a right to represent myself. Uh, I had no intention of causing a, a mockery in a forest. I wasn't going to cause chaos. I'm actually a nice, calm person anyway, so yeah. there wasn't going to be any, any uh, honor and screaming. It was the fact that I was that, that I had every intention of telling the truth to the jury, which which is amazing. In, in New Jersey's Constitution, uh, you can look it up, New Jersey Constitution, Article 1, Paragraph 6, it clearly says, in all prosecutions, the truth may be given to the jury, and the jury may judge the law as well as the facts. And that's all I was doing. I just wanted to tell the truth to the jury. And I, and I find it amazing that, that, the, that, that before trial starts, they make you put your hand on a Bible and swear to tell the truth when when the state gets to lie about what the substance marijuana is. You know, like the, the, the entire uh, statute that I'm being prosecuted under, the criminal statute in New Jersey for marijuana, calls marijuana a Schedule One drug having no medical value. So again, it's, it's ironic that I would be taken off the jury because I said, I mean, I'd be taken off the self-representation because I said I wanted to tell the jury the truth. You know, and what was this? I, I, I just find that amazing. Yeah. And what was the second reason for the postponement? You said oh, they were two. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, okay. After I was told um, that the public defender will represent me now, uh, since I was taken off, I, I then said uh, uh, it was going, it was going to get uh, postponed for a couple weeks at that point because of the prosecutor, the public defender was now representing me. Can't At force point, the public defender up. on you. I didn't hear you. It's not constitutional to force the public defender upon you. Oh, I know. I totally understand. That's what I said. I said it on the record that you're shackling me to the public defender's office who refuses to to assist me in the defense I've chosen. I even said again, Beretta versus California does not only say I can represent myself, it also says that I can choose my own defense for I am the only one who's going to suffer behind bars if that defense fails. Damn right. Um, so, so, so I even quoted that on the record. I want to make sure on appeal that these that the appellate court judges can read exactly what I was saying. But the second reason was that, that at that point, I told the judge that, you know, informed him of my medical uh, issue that I'm suffering from now. I told him that prior to his ruling just now, I was willing to take the chance on going to trial. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, 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 <laughs> we're driving. There's a little road rage incident going on. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Um, 
I, I told the, the, the judge that prior to his ruling that I was I was willing to take the chance on going to trial and facing my jury because I thought I'd win and I'd be able to come back to California and get the surgery right. that I was scheduled for. But since he took me off of uh, self-representation, the likelihood of me being convicted was higher. And because of that, I would like to get my surgery that was scheduled to get that done first. Because when I was in prison in 2000, I had another, I had a bout then of tumors. And I had to have a, had to have a tumor taken out of my leg. While I was in prison, you got bone tumors, then. right? Bone tumors in your na- knee and yes. leg. Yep. Ed, right? I, I Ed, get them in my big bones. Yes. Ed, don't be so forlorn and don't put lawyers down. I am one, <laughs> okay? Because I have successfully made sure that the jury not only understands what you stand for vis-a-vis marijuana. But they also understand and have reinforced what in Massachusetts jurors are told by the judge in a videotape of the judges about the historical significance of the jury. And you get to refer to people in Massachusetts anyway, you get to refer to a smuggler by the name of John Hancock. All right? And one of the reasons why this is part of the argument, and I think you can find it on uh, Normal's website under their legal briefs. But you should check it out. It was in the case involving Cusick and Keith Stroop uh, having been charged with possession of marijuana in Massachusetts back uh, in 2007. And that's what we were trying to argue. But we don't use the term jury nullification. Professor Nesson and I used a, a, it's a very different term. It's not jury nullification. It's very different. They're not judging the law. They're judging whether you're guilty, and guilt requires moral, some sort of moral reason why the state should be punishing you. And where 12 jurors can't believe, agree on that. Well, this is what I tell jurors all the time. I tell them it's moral guilt. It's the equivalent. In Massachusetts, it's beyond a reasonable doubt and to a moral certainty that the person should be punished. That's basically what it means. Right. I totally understand that. But this case is in New Jersey. And New Jersey's Constitution specifically says the jury may be told the truth. So that's all I No, no, no. And, and the truth... I'm going to tell the jury the truth. And the truth and the you truth want... Is, Ed, hold on. Mm-hmm. The truth you want the jury to know is that this is mine. I possessed it for my own use. I have medical problems. And a pound is a is a carton of cigarettes for a medical user, like you said. Well, how, how like people have prescriptions, you know? They they get ninety days a prescription, sixty days. I so, mean, come on. So so look look to your lawyer, don't and tell him to look into these arguments. I'll even talk consult with him for free for a little bit uh, to make sure he understands yeah. the argument that he absolutely positively is entitled to make, especially if your constitution says that. Want to. They don't want to. It's it's already. I mean, I've I've gone through this battle that you're talking about. I've I've already went through this. The public the defender is not going to make an argument for you. They're not going to make. It's going to get to the no. jury the fact that you're your uh why you use marijuana and why you had a pound which is extremely relevant to the topic of whether you had the necessary intent the to judge, possess it to distribute the judge, it the judge already ruled our medical necessity defense is invalid no 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 i'm not so talking about bad. your medical necessity defense i'm not talking about your medical necessity defense i'm talking about the lesser included offense of simply possessing marijuana right okay right that i could get you any I could get you any court in Massachusetts, have it reduced. The way it was packaged, have it reduced to simple possession. That's what. Right. That's one goal you want. Because simple possession, not what's me. it going to be? Not, street time? That's not, that's not, no, that's not what I want. Not at all. I am going 100% for total. Like, the only thing I want is to walk out of there. I'm not pleading guilty to anything. I don't... I don't even want a simple possession yeah. charge. I want to not no, no, no. or a hung jury. Ed, or a Ed. hung jury. Ed, what I'm trying to explain to you, and you, you, you it's very important because this will help you I get you what it. you want so done. No, Steve. You tried to explain it's how you make the fighting this for for 15 years. I totally Ed, understand. Ed, Ed it's how you make the that. record. It's how you make the record for the appeal because while you're not going to be able to make the long speeches that you would like to make about the benefits of marijuana in your life. And oh, I, I was saying the law is, all right, uh, a 
there are other ways to establish the record and make a full offer of proof but through examination or the judge is absolutely out of her mind and just wasting their time yeah. and she did she did he or she rule on jury nullification they basically said that no no they haven't actually touched said that word jury nullification no what, what he what he did was hit on all the things I wanted to do, including my witnesses, the witnesses that would have supported my argument that the law is wrong. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me that one iota. I know I'm going to have the right to do my opening statement ultimately. And when I do, I'm going to say exactly what I said I was going to say. And that's it. I'm not even thinking about anything else. It's not going to happen. Or I just shut up and tell the jury that this is the kangaroo court. You know, like, this is it. I, I'm not allowed to have witnesses. I'm not allowed to talk. I'm not allowed to present anything. If this is what you want to stand behind and find me guilty, then go ahead. I'll do my time. Otherwise, I think you should say not guilty. But that's it. Like, I totally understand everything you're saying, and you're not understanding that I've already been through this, I've already done this, and I got a plan, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. That's it. All right. And, and we want to wanna, I wanna, I wanna ask you something else, some other questions. Uh like what? Uh, actually, maybe even related to the court case. What groups or organizations or indie press or people are supporting you right now out there in this court case? Well, over the, over the years, I've, I've never really ever been able to get the, the support of normal. But you know, I have a couple of normal individuals have been showing up lately at my um, at, at my hearings. Um, the, the New Jersey Coalition of Medical Marijuana has showed up. Matter of fact, they've even organized a, a protest at my last court hearing, and they plan on having a protest throughout my, my trial right in front of the courthouse. They plan on filing, uh, uh, passing out fully informed jury association pamphlets. Um, I probably will be doing it for a week or two before the trial in order to catch jurors, uh, you know, in and out prior to actually being selected for my jury. Um, I did that in my last trial, too, for, for two weeks before. Um, prior to my last trial, every Monday was election day. I would uh, I would I would pass out um, flyers, um, fully informed jury association flyers, um, and 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 some of them did actually jurors. I was I was told by several jurors that they had uh, they did receive it. They they got them you know the week before. They totally understood what I was doing. It was Excellent. working. I just I just blinked. That's all. Yeah. In that last trial, I, I blinked. The, the state offered me a uh, this, this, I, you know I. I always say the state blink, and then I blink too because yeah. I had said then I wasn't going to take a deal. There's no way I was taking a deal. The jury was going to say it, and then they offered me a deal that I didn't, I couldn't refuse. It was, it was three to six months in jail. I went from facing 20 years to three to six months in jail. Yep, I took the deal. I, I blinked too. I took the deal, and I've always regretted it. And even at that, yep. when I took the deal, I felt I, I felt bad about it. Is that I went against my word, and that's why I'm so adamant now that I'm not going to take any deal. Mm. Um, but uh, I took that deal and I regretted it for the last 11 years. Well, we, we wish you luck with the trial and your surgery. And your campaign for your General campaign. Assembly of New Jersey. And all the media that you're getting. Tom Hartman was another one supporting you. I saw he did a video um, on his show. Is that Was that on M MSNBC? I think it's MSNBC. Yeah. He, has, he also has a radio show, so he did it on his radio show also. Awesome. Um, you know, which was, was, was great. This was great. I, I got, I had a reverse hit counter on my website. Yep. And um, so I was able to see where all the hits were coming from, and yeah, there was a significant uh, amount came from the uh, Tom Hartman show. It, yeah. You know, they heard it on Tom Hartman and then went online and, and checked me out, and it was like, you know, kind of amazed. It's like the um, number I, one. I'm getting, from, I'm getting a lot from your site. From your site right now. I checked this morning to see where I was getting hits from, and they were coming from. Uh, Mike uh, can from you. That. Yeah, and Mass Can yeah, too. I exactly. think uh, Mass Can Normal yeah. is supporting on it. And Facebook that and Mike and Can. And that website is where. Uh, it's videos. Uh, you yeah. just basically go and to Mike. NJ. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you go to NJWeedman.com, that's that's my website. Yeah, that's for NewJerseyWeedman.com. NJWeedman.com. And by the way. I'd like to tell your listeners that, I, that I'm also an author. I wrote a book um, almost two years ago, and I sell the book. It's on my website. If you go to my website, you can buy it directly from me, or you can buy it at Amazon.com also. But I want to let everyone know, 
If you buy the book directly from me, it comes with a signature. And on page 82, where I talk about smoking my first joint, there's a joint there. <laughs> as you read, as you read about my joint, oh my about God. my first joint, I want you there. I want you to feel feel me uh, as you read it. So every joint, every book that you buy from me, from my website, comes with a joint in it. How much is fact, I got two. I got two calls today from different individuals in New Jersey. Just let me know that they received their book today. Oh my God! How much is the book? Oh, everyone wants to know how much the book is. But, well. Again, if you order the book from Amazon, I think it's 17 or 16. If you order it from me, it's 27. It says, it says, it says, that includes the shipping cost. You know, there's a signature, and there's a bud there. It's a good Cali bud, and trust me, that Cali bud is worth more than 10 bucks. So don't worry about it. It's my, give, it's my giveaway. Wow. Ed, that's... Uh, How's the wow. governor like in those giveaways? I don't know. He seems to... He claims he's not getting them. His, uh... Someone in the mail room at the at the uh, governor's office though is enjoying them. <laughs> you have um, been sniff stealing but, it. <laughs> but, but the funny thing was, there was there was his, his spokesman uh, this week, and now had to make an announcement several times that that the governor never received them. Um, so this week there was one mail to the governor's spokesman. So <laughs> the governor's spokesman will receive one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it's got to get through the, the mail room. And, and I find it. To me, these are acts of civil disobedience that brings some type of news, some type of press to the cause. And hopefully now, they... Here we are, we have the governor of New Jersey, Christopher Christie, who's been blocking implementation of New Jersey's medical marijuana bill, by the way. But he's a, a vice presidential and a, and a presidential, uh, you know, he's on the radar. Candidate, and yeah. Presidential material. Uh, people nationwide are watching him. And guess who he has to talk to, a couple, talk about a couple times today, mm. this week. New Jersey weed New man. Jersey weed man. And how he did not receive marijuana through the mail, through his window, through his office, forever. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, to me, yeah, think... there should be some people out there who think that, that that was ridiculous or, or whatever. But, you know, the greater cause of civil dis disobedience actually is to bring <laughs> attention to the cause. And that's what I did. I think it's you know, genius. People, a genius, yeah, you know, because it's like media is yeah. worth so much money. You got them. You 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 ran the right message. It's like great. I hope the governor smoked that joint or someone in his staff smoked that weed right in the you know right in their their government offices. Right. You know, like awesome. Hey, you, know, <laughs> you know what? You know what I got from 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 different people who were asking question the wisdom of doing that, and and how this all came to light is because the. Uh, Mercer County, that's the county where the, where the governor's office is, um, has convened a grand jury to look into the possibility of indicting me for mailing marijuana to the governor of New Jersey. And I invite them to. Go ahead, indict me. Oh my Let's God. have a trial about it. You know, like, go ahead, you're playing right into me. I don't think you're that dumb, but go ahead. Let's, let's do this. But the thing, but the thing is, the state of New Jersey wouldn't have any jurisdiction, to be honest with you. If there was a crime committed, like being somebody mar mar mailing marijuana, the crime would have been committed in California. The fact that he received it in New Jersey, hmm, that's a whole other story. Uh, but the crime that the, the New Jersey authorities would be trying to indict someone for happened in California. If New Jersey, if, if California authorities want to indict me for ma ma mailing marijuana from California to someone, so be it. Let's go for it. I don't think California would be, wor be worried about it and waste their time and resources protecting the governor of New Jersey, though, from some marijuana. It, it, it's not like California you're, it's does. not, Ed, yeah. it's not like you're hiding from yeah. the federales. Right. And, and then again, and the feds, would the feds really waste the time and resources over a joint, over a gram of marijuana being mailed to a governor? If that you know, happens, like, you know, I, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. And, and if they did, again, they play into my hands yeah. by putting me on MSNBC and yeah. CNN yeah. and my cause. Yeah. You know, that's what would happen if they did. So, yeah. again, when people ask me, aren't you afraid of getting arrested? Aren't you afraid of getting indicted? No, <laughs> I'm not. To be honest with you, I might have to pay bail. I might have to sit somewhere for a couple of days. But, you know, it's not a life sentence. I'll get out. And guess what? I'll be on the front page of a couple of newspapers, I'll be uh, on CNN, and I'll have my day in court one day, which will produce more, more press for the cause. Yep.
keep doing it, Ed. And uh, good luck to you in this court case. I hope they let you represent yourself. Oh, ultimately, I will represent myself. There's no way the judge can keep me from representing myself. And if he thinks he's, you know, <laughs> I never thought I'd ever be in a situation where I would think that I'd have to be, have my mouth taped and shackled. But that'd be the only way to keep me from giving my, my opening statement. I don't care what the judge says. That was That's going to be, that would be a, um, fireworks at the at the trial if as the, you know the, the the judge says okay it's the defense's turn i'm going to stand up <laughs> you know even that, my opening statement when it's time to give the opening statement i'm standing up and i'm going to walk over to the jury box and i'm going to start talking yep i don't even care what the judge says you know if he wants to make a mockery of the system i have to be shackled and taped in front of the jury then so be it that that would be the, the process but i know i have this right and whether this right is going to be enforced prior to my conviction and prior to the appellate process is up to the judge because he can shackle me and he can do whatever he wants to do and we can have our trial. I can sit in jail for a year or two and then I win on appeal and we do it all over again. You know, I totally understand exactly how this is going to work. I don't think the judge is that stupid to do that, though. I think the judge will, will relent and allow me to represent myself because his peers... His other lawyers, other judges are all going to tell him that he's wrong. He cannot do this. So, I mean, you know, the New Jersey Law Journal, I basically gave an interview to the New Jersey Law Journal basically about Ferretta versus California recently. And I, I told him, I said, not only does Ferretta versus California uh, say I have a right to, the Supreme Court case Ferretta versus California say I have a right to, I mirror Ferretta now in California, in, in, in that case, because anyone who's ever read that case understands that. Beretta initially asked to represent himself. The judge said yes. As the case got close to, to, to trial, the judge then revoked his right to represent himself because Beretta, at the time, was arguing some similar things that I'm arguing now, that he felt that he was being done wrong and he was going to speak to the jury himself. And that's what he wanted to do. And the, and the judge in that case removed him. The California Appeals Court sided with the judge. The California... Supreme Court sided with the judge. But then when it went to the Supreme Court of the United States, the Supreme Court just sided with Ferretta and said not only did he have an uh, unequivocal right to represent himself, it solidified the Sixth Amendment right to present witnesses, and it solidified uh, the right of, of a defendant to choose his own defense. And that's what Ferretta wanted to do. And that was his problem with the public defender's office. He had chosen the way he wanted to defend himself, and the public defender's office did not want to pursue it that way. They had a different idea and uh, he was convicted and that was really argued that they, you know, that he was removed. And anyway, the same thing in my case. At this point, I actually mirror Beretta to the T. Like, there's no way the judge is going to get away with doing this. Fascinating, Ed. We'll follow you on your website, njweedman.com, right? Yep. njweedman.com and to your listeners, again, there's a link there to order my book. It doesn't say it directly on there about the gift that you receive, but I'm telling you now that every single book that I sign has a bud in it. And there you go. You order, and uh, you, order, you order it from me. I sign it. You know, you can skip to page 82 if you want, but I prefer you read the book, get to page 82, and you really enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. <laughs> New Jersey weed man. Thanks for hit, for uh, being on. A man that refuses not to, rep, you know, he he refuses. He's gonna represent himself no matter what. He has, and he has been for right. twenty years. Unless they want a ruling, unless him. they want to get a ruling that he's incompetent to do yep. so. Yep. Without without proving he's insane and dangerous, he's. He's wow. in trouble. Well, we that was sure quite a phone call. That, that was, was a long phone was, call, but that was it. That was yeah. That was a pretty good interview. Wow. I mean, this guy is uh, facing ten years. You know. Yeah, he's facing ten years. Whether he'll get ten years, whether and it's like he... it's it's all down to what he said. I mean, you heard his words. It's like if he gets to represent himself and and present and to the jury, he's going to get at least four or five people on his side out of that you know pool. If if it's a public defender, he ain't going to get that, and and that's what the whole fight is about right now yeah, for well, him. Right, so right we need now, we, we just... need people to support this guy. Click on his videos. Go to his website. Buy his book. 
um, go to you know go to his act you know when he has a court case like he yeah, has in New Jersey when, we, when we learn his get act, to court actual date get to court the and more get a video camera I want to see more videos the more people in the courtroom who are obviously there for a defendant make a big big difference in how the trial happens. free New Jersey weed man you know that's that's gonna be the new we we got free Mark Emery we got to free a lot of political prisoners they I think they just freed Dana Beal. Yeah. You know, he's out for a little while. He's got some he's really bad medical the, health. The president doesn't know what the fuck to do. And we'll talk about that uh, after these words from our sponsors and some music. On regularradio.com. 